Yep. Oh, he knows what's coming. Oh, when you see the fear strike in their eyes. Yep. <laughs> Welcome to Food Fears, where I make something you hate taste great. Today's guest is a two-time cookbook author, one of the most extraordinary food tubers on the internet, and the man of my dreams, one of the best torsos I've ever seen, Andrew Ray from Binging with Babish. Andrew, welcome. Thank you, man. Coming from the best torso in the biz here. I think we have equally good torsos. I'm looking at you, and I'm telling you definitively that you're built, you're cut from a different cloth. That is very nice of you to say. Thank you so much. I'm going to go hit the gym after this real quick. One of the things I was most fascinated that you said in an interview is that if you could go back, you would change the name of Binging with Babish. Because a lot of people just call you Babish. Most people think that's my actual name. I named my... Uh, my, my channel after my Reddit handle, which I had named as a joke. So really it's a joke named after another joke. Have you cleaned up your Reddit history since? I had nothing to clean up. Okay, no, I wasn't truly, implying anything. Truly and honestly. My shadow account, on the other hand, we don't want to take a look at that, do we, folks? All right, so your channel has obviously enjoyed a lot of success. And this show, Food Fears, and your show are actually nominated for the same award in the streamies. Yes, they are. I would like to issue a proposal to you. Since you've now been on this show, I've never been on your show. The only way for both of us to win as if Food Fears wins. You're following the logic there, right? I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> so if you would campaign for Food Fears to win, technically, you and I could share the stage together, and I think that'd be like a really nice treat for both of us, frankly. That sounds fair. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know what? You know, never mind. Uh, did, uh, yeah, I'll see you at the streamies, but. Go vote for Rosanna Pancino. Right, yeah, do what you vote for Gordon Ramsay. He really needs this, you know, some attention. He needs yeah. the spotlight. Like. All right, uh, I asked you that before we revealed what was under the cloche because I feel like you may not like me as much. What are you about to do to me? Okay, so what we have today, it's actually something you've experienced before. Yep, oh, he knows what's coming, oh, when you I see the fear strike in their eyes. This, you said on this show? Yep. <laughs> so we have pork blood, but one thing you've never had, you've only had the solid coagulated version, but you've never just straight drank straight pasteurized pork blood, which, I see, you know, you don't seem happy about it right now, but I think your mind's gonna be changed when you feel the cold, refreshing blood rush down your throat with the, the chewy curd. I have to go on stage in like two hours, man. You're gonna <laughs> do great, you're a natural performer. I'm not performing right now. This is blood that I'm yeah. about to have to consume. So what you're gonna do, I wash my hands. Dude, I'm not gonna be able to put away all this. What do I do? I'm yeah, I mean, you, you, can just, you, know, you can just eat the, I think you just eat the blood that's soaked, it's kind of falling, uh-oh, oh no, I got blood on the tablecloth, I'm sorry guys. Oh, God. Yeah, you can just kind of grab it out of there. Just get it like nice and wet with the blood. All right, here we go. All right, I, so, I, can't, I can't eat the whole thing. Bit... Just take as much as you can. Uh, what are you doing? Are you doing the whole thing? Yeah, I'm gonna do the whole thing to knock back the shot. Sorry, right, I regret so this. We're just gonna go ahead and we're just gonna kind of, kind of get them. There we go. And then just uh, down the hatch. Alla goccia, as they say in Italian. You like pasta? Just I'm in control. Yeah, just <laughs> once you once you get it in, it'll go down. I would do a half bite. Here we go. Mm, so. This is so awful. But like in a good way? Yeah, no, in a great way. Okay. How did you do that? I think it's good, man. I eat a lot of coagulated pork blood, but you don't seem to feel the same way as I do. Oh, God, no. I will spit that up all over your face. So now that my mouth tastes like, you know, iron and, mm -hmm. uh, and platelets, yes. uh, well, what are you going to do to make this, you know, something that I actually want to eat? I have a rough plan in mind, and I think it's going to be something that you really, really like. So if you just go entertain yourself for a bit, come back, I'm gonna have a dish that I know can make you fall in love with pork blood. But here's the thing, I've seen your show before, I know you work magic, so I trust you, and I also know that you're way better at your job than I am, because there's no way I could make anything good out of this. <laughs> Trusting me was your first mistake. <laughs> <laughs> to make the blood ganache, first you have to pasteurize your blood, which means we're gonna go ahead and get it to about 140 degrees. I shouldn't say about when we're working with like something that could maybe kill you. We're gonna get it to exactly 140 degrees or more. Pork blood, honestly, like one of my favorite things to cook with. I, a lot of people seem to leave in the comments that they think I'm a sociopath and I suppose this isn't gonna help that. I know I'm not a sociopath because I care about many things and I like to think that I show empathy and emotion, except for people who beat me in Scrabble because they'll get what's coming to them. 
Welcome back to Jeffrey Dahmer in the kitchen. You're gonna see the blood start to curdle just a little bit. That's fine, just keep whisking through it. We're gonna go ahead and make our chocolate starfish and hot dog flavored water. So we're just gonna put the chocolate in there. It's not Limp Bizkit's best album. I'm a $3 bill y'all fan, but it still holds up. Go give it a listen. Also, I met Fred Durst at a magic club once. And then we're actually gonna add coconut milk to it. Coconut milk uh, holds heat really well. And uh, I don't know, you know, you're supposed to limit your dairy consumption. So when you're adding pork blood to a ganache, might as well use coconut milk, why not? It's healthy. Then once that blood's pasteurized, you put some of that in there, get it right in the ganache. And you're gonna see it's gonna create a beautiful rosy texture and just get that swirling in. Look at that. <laughs> Gross. I think Babbage is gonna like it. You think he's gonna like this? I hope so. He's gonna like it. And he's gonna be like, wow, that was cheeky and fun and not like, this is horribly grotesque and I don't respect you and your career or anything that you do ever again. Find out. You're gonna place that in a silicone cylinder mold and then pop that in the freezer to set. Test it to make sure it's pure. <laughs> oh yeah, that's pork blood. All right, cool. We're gonna put this in the freezer for a couple hours until it's all set up. And then we're gonna pop that into our cakes. For the blood meringue, you're gonna add your pig's blood to a stand mixer, and then you're gonna add in granulated sugar, powdered sugar, and salt. And the proteins in the blood, similar to egg whites, are actually going to combine, whip up, aerate, then we're gonna bake it into a nice, crispy sheet. Then you're gonna spread that really thin out onto a silicone mat on a sheet tray. If they would have doused Carrie in pig blood meringue, that movie would have had such a happy ending, because this is delicious. You can see the color is completely changed. I'm just gonna spread it a little bit thin. I'm just gonna take this, pop it in the oven, 375 for about 20 minutes. Oh, hey there. I'm sorry to interrupt the most amazing food show that's ever existed on the internet, except for hot ones. But if you wanna see more amazing food shows starring yours truly, please subscribe to the Mythical YouTube channel. If enough people subscribe, we'll get to make more shows. Make sure to click that little bell to get notifications because you never know what I'll be up to next. But that little bell knows. It knows everything. Food fears! To make the blood cakes, you're gonna start with a double boiler and you're gonna melt down chocolate with butter. And then we're gonna start by taking some chocolate and putting it in this psych. That's a big old, that's a big old brick of coagulated pig's blood. And then we're just gonna cube it up. Blood's just food. It's really good actually. I don't know why people are afraid of this. And while that's melting in a stand mixer, you're gonna add blood, egg yolks, and sugar. We're already covering ourselves in pig's blood. What's a little egg white's gonna give you? It'll be fine. Once that's nice and incorporated, you take the chocolate and butter and you stream that in. Let me go ahead and pull this out. Not again! Then you're gonna fold in flour and some chopped up solid blood cubes. And then we're just gonna take a handful of blood, doesn't matter. Pop it in there. Be nice and delicate with it. You don't wanna break up the blood curds. So my grandma told me when she made this recipe. Oh, my grandma's taught me tons of blood recipes. That's why I'm not allowed to go into the fridge in the basement. All right, and so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna dress our ramekins and we're gonna put the batter in there. Put it in the silicone. Cylinder. Cylinder, that's the word I was looking for. So, okay, back to you, Chris. You're gonna take your ramekins, you're gonna coat those in butter and demerara sugar. Sometimes I just brush myself down with butter. Okay. There are so many benefits to brushing yourself down with butter. It's like the bulletproof coffee movement where like the fat does something or CrossFit keto. I don't care, it just feels good. And now we're gonna take our bloody cake mixture. We're gonna fill it about halfway up. Take a cylinder of frozen ganache, place that right in the center, and then just enough cake batter to cover it. See, they just pop out nice and easy, and then this is actually going to be the molten filling. A lot of people think you just undercook the cake to make it molten, that's not true. As seen in the movie Chef. Ooh, got snagged on a blood cube. Okay, now we're just gonna take a small layer of filling right on top. Then you're just gonna place that in the oven and bake it till it's cake. Bake well, gross cakes. And then now we're gonna start working on our garnishes. For the blood whipped cream, we're gonna do this by hand. Um, I didn't wanna do it, but Nicole said I should, and my forearms are gonna start cramping in about three minutes, so let's start. It builds character, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna start whisking it until it starts to thicken up a little bit. Food fears! All right. <laughs> then you add half your sugar. So we're gonna get it a little stiffer than normal. That's what, nothing. <laughs> I didn't say it. Keep whisking it until soft peaks form, add the other half of the sugar, and then just enough blood to give it a beautiful rosy complexion. And this is pasteurized blood, so it's pasteurized or unpasteurized? This is pasteurized. Oh, thank God, so this is pasteurized blood. Oh, the blood comes through, but just a little bit, just enough to give you that like kind of sickening edge, but I think in a good way. For our blood macerated berries, we're gonna take some fresh strawberries and blueberries. You wanna do this very carefully. You also wanna say that word very carefully. Yes, macerate. Not to be confused with the other word, masticate. Just gonna go ahead and pour some of that pasteurized pork blood in there. 
You thought I was gonna say master bin. Then you're gonna get some sugar. The sugar is actually gonna draw the moisture out of the berries. Then a little bit of bourbon. Then you're actually gonna get in there and really mash it with your hands a little bit just to get the juices flowing. And then just start punching it. And it actually should create a nice little sauce. You're gonna take one of those cakes out of the oven and gingerly remove it by placing a plate on top of the cake and then flipping it over. And we're gonna get this on the plate. Now we gotta invert it. I flip the plate upside down. You gotta go. And that is how it unsheaths perfectly. Beautiful. Then you're gonna put a dollop of berries straight on top of that. The maceration in the cake hole. And flick some of the macerating juices all over the plate. Gotta give it a little, little flick. A few shards of meringue on top. Some nice thin shards that we can put in the cream. Really tell a story. A story of a horrible double murder. And then you're gonna dust the meringue right on top as if it were powdered sugar. And that's your pork blood chocolate lava cake. Andrew, welcome back. Uh, how are you recovering? I, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm picking bits of blood out of my teeth and I'm shuddering every like 30 seconds thinking about it. It's just it's when you get the thought, you're just, uh, for you, you're just like, you know, oh, that was tasty. Yeah, every shot of pig's blood I take, I get stronger. Yeah, just, that's your secret. That really is the secret. I mean, look at the veins, folks. All right, so you're ready to see what we got under the cloche, what I've made for you. Very ready, I'd love okay. to get that blood out of my mouth and get some bl other blood that tastes better into my, what? Yeah, yep. yes, I'm ready. <laughs> All right, so you really have been a huge influence to me. I know there have been some big influences on you. So we've actually made a pork blood chocolate lava cake. Oh my God. Inspired by your recipe, which is inspired by the movie Chef. So what we've done is infused a lot of liquid pork blood into the actual cake with some of the pork blood solids. There's pork blood in the ganache. We've done a pork blood meringue, which is actually just whipped pork blood and sugar. Wow. Then a pork blood whipped cream, and then we've macerated berries in blood and a little bit of bourbon as well. That's very interesting. First off, I wish John were here to try this. I'm sure he'd love it. And uh, second off, so does blood go very well with chocolate or is this just an, a, a, an attempt to mask the blood? Uh, no, blood actually does go really well with chocolate. Uh, in fact, there's a Filipino stew called dinuguan that a lot of parents will trick their children into eating by calling it chocolate stew. Interesting. So there is a precedent for it. I also just want to say that blood goes very well with chocolate sounds like some kind of indie film that like one of, you know, a, yeah. Uh, it's sort of a, a fringe it's film like a festival. Blood award. is the warmest color blood kind of the, thing. Yeah, no, yeah. exactly. Uh-huh. <laughs> Go ahead and dig in. We gotta test this out. No, first things first, we gotta see if it's molten. We gotta see if it's molten. That's molten, look at that. It's molten! It's, it's molten! It's molten! <laughs> Oops. Blood stripper. But does it taste good? Please grab a bite. I'll go right there with you with some of the blood cream. I wanna try each element by itself yeah. to see what's going on. So I'm gonna really try and focus on the blood flavor. Because if you notice, to... you see these whole blood cubes in there. We yeah. wanted that for texture. Because there's, there's the metallic taste with the mm -hmm. blood, and I am getting that, and it's, it's almost like, um, as if uh, you had added like lemon zest or something. It's like, yeah. like a bit of a... Well, actually, the reason Dutch processed cocoa exists is to get the metallic taste out of chocolate already. Well, how do you? Yeah. Yeah, so you just went and brought it back in. <laughs> it doubled down, <laughs> tripled down, in fact. All right, well, now I'm gonna try some of this blood cream. Mm. All right, that tastes a little bit more like blood. Uh -huh. than anything else. Yeah. But it's not bad. It tastes a little porky, I will say. Like, mm -hmm. it's not, you know, as dessert-oriented as I would like it to be. But let me let me try the, uh... Just to cut the richness, a little bit of berries, a little bit of bourbon. You know, this is something I could see, you know, eating the entirety of, honestly. I think you've really outdone yourself. Be Mike, we'll get you some fresh blood on the side oh, if you want to eat with so that much. as well. Yeah, yeah please. Yeah. By all means. You've done it. What just made me literally recoil, and I can see the whole chunks of blood in there. It's really a conceptual thing. Blood doesn't taste that bad. It's no. like the fact that you're eating this coagulated blood and that you feel this, you taste the metallic as, the, as if you just like licked a, a cut on your hand. It, 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 it's so off-putting, but in this context, this is really quite good. And honestly, that's the thesis behind the show, right? Like this is all just food. Like I grew up eating a lot of pork blood, so to me, it's just food. And then when you can recontextualize it in someone's mind, it becomes a beautiful thing. Mission accomplished, dude. Well, ah. thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this is a huge honor to have you compliment my food, and I actually have one more parting gift Ooh. for you. Uh, John Favreau gave you the fork that you have tattooed on your arm. Uh -huh. I would like to give you a fork that I have tattooed hey. on my arm. It's not as special, it wasn't in a movie, 
This, um, is, this is very special. Should I get this tattooed now? Should I get a matching one? I would love that. I'll get any of your, I'll just get your face tattooed on my back if it would make you happy. It would make me happy. Can I hold you to that? Whoever loses the streamies has to get the other's face tattooed on their back. What did I just do? <laughs> oh, I just, this is, <laughs> <laughs> this is a deal. Andrew, thank you so much for joining me. And everybody, go buy his cookbook, Binging with Babish. Check out his channel. He's honestly a huge hero of mine. Thank you so much for coming. A huge hero of mine. This is amazing. Thank you so much for having me. Food fears! Sorry, if we do that, I just scream food fears, and it kind of wraps everything up. <laughs> you see how everyone just stopped now? Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to keep watching food content like this, subscribe to the Mythical YouTube channel, and let me know in the comments what your food fears are. See you next time.